What is happening everyone? I'm Timmy Feedy, welcome back to the show. Um, what I want to do today is talk about equipment for the kitchen. I had someone at work, a friend at work, ask me about, uh, some, well she just wants some recommendations. And then I kind of talked to her about what to look for and you know, some good brands and how to kind of tell if something, if a, you know, a pan was a good quality or if knives were good. And it made me think, well maybe I should do, do that on here just so that you guys can um, I can just give you some good info and all this sort of stuff. So what I'll do is I'll just go through all my equipment, show you what I've got and show you what to look for. Uh, and then, um, and what I think are kind of essentials that you kind of need. And then uh, hopefully it's gonna be useful for you. So first off, let's start with knives. So I've got a few knives out here in some of my drawers. So if you're gonna go and start off when you want a half decent knife, but you don't wanna you know, spend an absolute fortune, then I'd go with something like a global knife. Um, I've been using them for years and um, I find them really good. So what I think you do is probably as a bare minimum is get a knife like this, which is a 210 mil chef's knife and like a knife like this, which is like 130 to 150 mil kind of petty knife, they call it. And then also a little thing like this, which is like a kind of 100 mil little kind of knife for doing little things. So if you wanted a bare minimum of knives to cover you off, then this should do it. I like the Globals because they come with a really good edge on them and that will last you for a few months easily. And then if you know what you're doing with sharpening, you can actually get a really nice edge on these things. So um, that's something I'd also recommend you do. If you get into cooking and you know, you're gonna want a decent knife and you're gonna wanna know how to sharpen the knife. Because if you, if a, a, a knife that isn't sharp is A, it's super dangerous and B, it's kind of pointless really. So, um, so I always, you know, have these with a really good edge on them. Um, I've actually put my own edge on these now because I had to, once it loses its initial edge, you have to kind of learn how to do it. So, you know, that's, I've got a wet stone and I put the edge onto these and then hold it with a really nice edge on it. So, um, and I still use these from time to time and I've got slightly fancier knives now, but I always have these in my knife block up on the side and grab one if I need it. And I always just make sure there's a decent edge on them. So, um, so yeah, I think a 210 mil chef's knife, like a standard chef's knife, a 150 and a little, you know, 100 mil sort of thing like this. That lets you do your kind of handhold cutting things like this if you like doing that, you know. Um, and this is just good for kind of just smaller little stuff, you know, so. Um, and you might be more comfortable with a knife this sort of size. What I would say is make sure it's deep, deep enough, because, uh, one that's kind of this sort of size you can't really do this sort of chopping with it's it's um you know it, it's you need a bit more height to it so but i mean I, I always go to a 210 and you know do stuff like that so so yeah so global for me that that's what i'd recommend as a not going to break the budget completely but they're a good quality knife the steel's good and it will hold a really good edge but learn how to sharpen a knife properly because that is super important. And don't use those sharpeners that you drag it through. They're just really bad for your knife. So, um, I mean, you can get yourself one of these, which is a ceramic kind of sharpener thing, um, which you can, you know, you do this stuff with. But these aren't really designed to put an edge on a knife. These are designed to re-hone the edge that's on there and sharpen that back up again. Um, so it is good in a way, but you don't really want to be using this to, if the knife is really blunt, it won't really do a lot. So, but it's great if it's, you know, if, it, if you've sharpened it recently and it's a week or two in, you can just do literally a few passes like that on it and that will get the edge back on it. Sorry, stupid thing. Um, the other thing that's really good to have is a good bread knife. Again, this is a global bread knife. I've had this for, probably six or seven years, still sharp, still cuts bread fine. So a decent bread knife, it's gonna last you ages. So, um, and this global one, like I said, it's lasted me a long time. So, um, so as a bare basic set, that's what I'd go for. You can go into your kind of vegetable knife, like an Akiri knife like this, which um, is pretty good as well. Um, you know, it's good for doing, you know, your veggies and your things. And, you know, I like this sort of knife as well. So you could splash out and get a full set, which comes with a block. That's pretty good. But, you know, as an absolute bare minimum, those two for sure. And then if you want to add a few more, I'd get those. And if you want to be a bit fancier, then go for one of those. So, yeah, that's what I'd recommend for knives on a budget. I mean, they're still going to cost you a fair bit, but it's going to last you a long time. So 
But if you want to go a bit fancier, you can go up to your kind of Japanese knives. And if you're going to do that and get in, you want to get into your Japanese knives, then I'd recommend starting out with, again, similar to that, a 210 mil Guto, they call this. Um, I've probably pronounced that wrong. And that's your everyday, you know, doing your, you know, most of your stuff. I use this all the time. Um, and then you've got a 150 mil petty knife um, for your smaller kind of detailed stuff. And that should cover you off pretty, pretty nicely, really. I mean, you can get all sorts of other shaped knives, but initially this is all you need. You don't need much more than that. But again, if you're going to go for a knife like this, you need to learn how to sharpen them properly. Um, so... Uh, you can get a really good sharpener from Spyderco, which um, I said before, don't get one that you drag through with these like wheels that you drag it through. But this Spyderco thing is like a, it's a ceramic sharpener and it holds it at the angle and then you just you, you sharpen the knife on it on each side and that, that actually is pretty good. So that will do the job if you don't want to invest in A, some wet stains and B, learning how to do that. So, um, but yeah. These are Takamura knives, if you want to know. These are super, super sharp, really nice knives, but they're not cheap. So you're talking probably 350 and, you know, 300. So, you know, for each of those. So um, it is an investment, but it, if you look after your knives, it's going to last you a long time. So, um, and I'm completely obsessed with them now. So I, I have a big collection. So, um, but as a base, if you want to start into Japanese knives, then, a, you know, a 210 and a 150 that's going to set you up really, really nicely. So yeah, that's great. And then if you want to start getting a bit fancier, um, I've got like a Nakiri thing that I was talking about before. This is a Fujiwara knife. Um, so this is, yeah, for your veggies and stuff. This is a great knife. It's got a nice little notch in it here that you can kind of sit your kind of finger in, um, if I can show you like that. And that is just such a comfy knife. It's super light as well. And these are ridiculously, ridiculously sharp. So don't go near these Fujiwara knives unless you know what you're doing because this will cut off limbs like, easily. So be very careful. But these will also rust, so you need to keep them oiled. The other thing that I really like to have is a, is a Hong Kong knife. This is from like, made in Hong Kong, super light. You can get two sorts of these. You can get a chopper, which is a heavy duty, much thicker steel. And that's for chopping through bone. And this is your kind of detail knife which is super thin I mean if I can show you to the camera I mean it's super super thin blade but you can get a ridiculous edge on these things but again these will rust so you need to keep it oiled um, it's super light I mean you can get these in most Chinese supermarkets so um, I got these from Chinatown but uh, if you've got a half decent supermarket in your town like Chinese supermarket in your town they should have a knife section which sells these exact Hong Kong knives um, and so I'd recommend getting one of these because they're super good fun to use and doing really good detail kind of stuff and they hold a serious edge so because um, it's a carbon steel so the, 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 the metal is softer so it will blunt quicker but it will hold a really really sharp edge so this is one of those things that if you're using it every day you're going to be sharpening it once a week probably so um, probably at least you know but again these will do really nicely on these you just kind of hold that down on that or and that just brings that edge back really nicely if you also get into your japanese knives then you get yourself one of these well i made this this is just a bit of wood um, with some leather on it and then um, you just drag the knife across it to put the you can hear how sharp this is this just gives you a nice finishing for it. This is almost like using one of these things, but a slightly better way for using for doing it on your Japanese knives. And you just a few passes on that, and that just brings the edge right back. I mean, that is, I mean, you could shave with this thing, it's ridiculous. So yeah, that's really useful. But if you get into Japanese knives, then um, you can do your research and it will tell you about all that sort of stuff, like the sort of knives to get, how to look after them, how to sharpen them, and this kind of leather stropping thing. Um, so yeah really important so just decide what your budget is and then go from there really so if you're just starting out then i'd recommend going for like your globals and, and just go from there see how you get on um if you just really want to go for it then you know get yourself a couple of japanese knives like this start there and then you'll be obsessed and start buying all kinds which i've done so it's a very expensive habit be warned um so yeah so that's the knives um if you want to head over to chefsarmory.com 
that's where I get all my knives from. They've got a couple of stores around, around Australia. Um, they do ship internationally. So um, you can buy, you know, if you're in the UK or America or wherever, you can get your knives from them. But there'll be equivalent stores in the UK and in the States. Um, in the States, there's a good site called MCT Kitchen, uh, and they actually stock these Takamura knives. Um, so again, they're not cheap, but good investment for sure. So yeah, so that should cover off knives pretty nicely. Let's talk about frying pans next. So what I'd recommend if you're gonna do it, get yourself a good non-stick frying pan like this. Um, now I'll just show you this one as well. This is another non-stick. So this is scan pan and this is a Circulon commercial. Both are great. These have got these kind of ribbed, can you kind of see that? Got a nice ribbing in it. Excuse me. And um, yeah, the non-stick in it is really great and it's quite hardy. So you can actually use a bit of metal in this, even though I don't. This scan pan one, the non-stick cutting is really good, but you have to be nice and careful with the, uh, again, don't use metal in it, use other sort of utensils, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, I originally bought this pan for using on the show, but because it's aluminium, it's not, it doesn't work with induction. So, because it doesn't conduct, conduct it doesn't, you won't hold a magnetic charge, which is what it needs if you're gonna do induction. So I had to get this scan pan one, and as you can see on the bottom, it's got like a metal plate on it, which um, will conduct the electricity through the induction. So if you do have an induction hob like this thing, or obviously your bigger ones, then just make sure um, that it is compatible with induction. If you're buying it online, it will say if it's induction compatible. Um, if you're in a shop, I've asked someone who works there or check on the box and it will say if it's compatible with induction or not. I made that mistake with this, but this is a great pan and I, I've got gas hobs as well, so I use this all the time. And this one's particularly good, this Circulon Commercial, because it's quite a thick uh, metal here it's about five or six mil thick all the way through so that means once the heat's in the pan it holds its heat really nicely um, what you don't want is a thinner non-stick pan because they don't hold the heat so well and they'll burn more easily and stuff like that so the thicker the pan the more heat dispersion you get and the more control over the heat you have so that's something to think about generally the thick ones are more expensive but i mean this pan wasn't it was like 60 bucks or something so um, they do retail a bit more than that but we're lucky to have somewhere like Victoria's basement. So you can get really decent pans quite cheap. So as, as a good frying pan, yeah, just one good non-stick pan, nice big one like this, that covers you off for loads of stuff. If you wanna get a smaller one of these, you can, but to be honest, I just like to get one bigger one like this and that does the job. Um, so yeah, it's up to you, completely up to you. Now, the next thing we'll look at is cast iron pan. I have a couple of these as well. So this is a little one. I have one this size and I have a bigger one. Both, um, I mean, this is great as an individual thing. If you're cooking a little steak, you can get the heat really hot on this thing, chuck it in, seal it on both sides and then just whack it in the oven um, and then let that finish off in the oven and then you get it out and then you know do what you need to do with it. Just watch out, remember the pan handles get really hot. So um, these are great. You have to keep them, can you see there's like a sheen in this thing? You keep them oiled and seasoned. Um, the best way to do that is once you finish cooking, get it under the hot water, scrub it out with a brush. Um, don't use any soap because it will pull out all the um, oils and then put it back on the heat. Let it dry off all the um, water and then um, rub it with oil and then um, it kind of smokes a bit and then you can just rub it around with paper towel and then that does the job really nicely. So, um, and these things will go as non-stick as most non-stick pans if you keep it seasoned and keep looking after it. Um, so they're, again, they're not very expensive. Like, I mean, this probably cost me about 20 bucks or something, 30 bucks. So cast iron pans, because it's not a particularly refined thing. It's such an old school way to cook they really don't cost that much. So you can get slightly fancier ones. You can get some Japanese makes that are really good, but they cost you a few hundred dollars. So, um, but these, these ones are from Lodge. So they're, um, yeah, see, actually super cheap. So really good investment worth doing. But if you're gonna go down the cast iron route, it is a bit more of a faff to look after. So you have to 
um, make sure you're seasoning it and keeping it oiled and all this stuff and you can't just let it sit and you know because it will rust and if, if you fuck it up and you know so you do have to learn how to make look after these but they will go as non-stick as a non-stick pan but you know i like having a non-stick pan as well because it's good for some stuff so yeah so that's good now the other thing is what i recommend is i don't really have a non -stick, uh, a stainless steel frying pan i but i have a stainless steel one of these it's like almost like a semi saucepan it's like a you know frying pan kind of thing so you can fry stuff off in it if you want but this has got a big lid on it as well um again for this what we're looking for as you can see here it's got a really thick base on it and this has actually got a copper base so it conducts heat really nicely um, that's the thing if you're looking for a good stainless steel pan always make sure the base is thick um, you can get really cheap ones where it's really thin it's like as thin as it is on the sides and you do not want that because the heat will go straight through it and just burn whatever you've got in there straight away so you don't really don't want that so um, a thicker base gives you much more control over the heat and then what you need to do is just look for just make sure you check it that the handles are nice and sturdy and i mean these are like riveted in so they're not going to come off so i know this is a good pan um, and this has actually got these kind of um neoprene or you know heat resistant plasticky handles so they're great for um you know you can even put it in the oven if you wanted to so and they always stay cool so that's a really good thing um so yeah that's a really nice pan to have it's you know it's kind of like that thick great for little mini casseroles or your bangers and mash type of like onion gravies and stuff like that so yeah i really really love this pan and that's by uh that's estelle that pan can you see that yeah they're um really great make uh, Italian but again quite expensive but we're I got a really good deal on these in Victoria's basement so you know it's it's um you just have to hunt around uh, the next thing to look at is saucepans so um, I'll just use each one of these as an example I like to have a non-stick pan this size for doing the scrambled eggs and um, that sort of stuff reheating do things doing sauces and this is again a circular commercial so this is the same make as that frying pan this won't work on induction so just be aware of that um, you can get these now that work on induction though by the way so that is good so i always have a pan this size non-stick and also a stainless steel pan about this size but a bit deeper for doing sauces and little things boiling eggs stuff like that both of these come with lids so that's important so yeah so that's a good thing to have two pans this size one non-stick one stainless steel and then i always have a stainless steel pan this size for your pasta your dim potatoes all that kind of stuff rice you know um again make sure it has a lid and make sure the base is nice and thick this was a really cheap pan it was like 15 20 bucks and it's lasted me like 10 years so if you look after it and you know again the uh handles are riveted in so they're super secure and you know they don't wobble around and you know these have been like this and it's just you know i'm, I'm amazed at how long these pans lasted so as long as you know what to look for you can get really good pans for not that much um and this is just a, this is a scan pan stainless steel thing so um yeah I'd, i mean scan pan are a really good make if you can get a good deal on them then i'd recommend those or like i said circulon are pretty good as well so but you've got companies like benza that's pretty good um teflon pans aren't too bad you know the tfal sorry tfal pans are pretty good as well like jamie oliver supports them and you know they're, they're pretty good they're not bad so um one thing to look out for with the handles if they're kind of screwed in then be mindful of that because they tend to come unscrewed and then wobble about so you'll find if it's a frying pan that's got a screw in the end of it here in the handle they're not quite so good quality and they will come loose so i'd steer clear of those um, personally so yeah so um, I'd also have if you want to look at sizes one this size one this size and I'd go one slightly bigger as well stainless steel um, I think that covers you off really nicely and you shouldn't need much more than that really so um, the only other bigger pan that I have right, I'm running out of bloody room here hang on is a Le Creuset pan so this is a cast iron pan, um, really, really great. 
they um, you can put them in the oven with the lid on and like do pot roast in them. This will put you can fit a whole roast chicken in here and uh, roast it in there, and it keeps all the moisture in, and it's such a good way to do that. Um, let me just get some water. Ah, very nice. Um, these will work on induction because they're cast iron. Uh, they'll go in the oven, you know, they'll go on any, any sort of hob. They're, they're so versatile. Now these do cost a bit more money. This is about two to $300 depending on where you get it from. So um, you do need to be willing to put the investment in. But again, I've had this like 10 years and it's, um, it's still going strong. So it's uh, yeah, really, really awesome pan. You can just for soup, stocks, casseroles, you know, whatever. It's, it's a great thing. I, I highly recommend that. And this is about a 30 centimeter, like 28 centimeter, 30 centimeter pan. So um, it's a good size, more than enough for doing big dinner parties and stuff. You don't need to get much bigger than that. Um, they come in lots of nice pretty colors as well. So um, yeah, so I'd recommend one of those. And I've also got one of these as a oven roasting uh, pan which is really really good and great for roast potatoes so I'll be doing a roast potato how to kind of well how to make the ultimate roast potatoes recipe and that I'll be using my cast iron pan because that's um yeah really good way to get really crispy edges on them so um yeah so that's really worth getting I think and then in terms of um oven trays and stuff I do have some metal ones but I just like using Pyrex so I've got a few different sizes of this and I've got one with a lid on so it's good for putting stuff in reheating in the oven um, it's a lot less wasteful as well because if you've got a lid like this you don't have to use foil or anything like that or cling film in the fridge you can just put it in there like this and that's fine it, it costs a bit more, but it's worth getting for sure. And this, yeah, I've got two sizes of this This guy. Um, you can roast potatoes in it, roast veggies, do whatever you want in it, roast your tomatoes and, you know, whatever you'd use a normal metal oven tray for, I use this thing. Um, one, I think it lasts longer. Two, it cleans better because it's kind of glass. So it will never kind of get all that baked on oven -y shit that you get on stuff, on like your metal trays. Um, so yeah, I tend, I tend to just use those and this one is great because it's a bit deeper, you can see, so this is great for lasagna. I did this the other day on my lasagna recipe and got, you know, four nice sized portions out of it. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend getting a few of those instead of the metal oven trays because they do work and they're okay. And I do have a few, but I don't really use them anymore since, since going over to these, I don't see the, see the need to. Um, and a lot of them come with a non-stick coating, which will eventually scrape off and flake off. And I just, you don't need it, you know? So I use my cast iron, one of these, for the bigger stuff that I need. And that does cost a bit of money, but again, it lasts ages. And then for the rest of the stuff, I just use these guys. They're, they're absolutely awesome. So yeah, so that's those. The other good Pyrex thing to get is a Pyrex measuring jug. Um, this is a really nice size one. They're all good heat proof, so you can put your boiling water in it and make your stocks and whatever else. Um, measure your quantities of liquid. Um, this is good, but you can only, the minimum is 500 mil, so you can't go any less than that, which is a bit annoying, but you can get smaller ones of these, so you could get two sizes. Um, but that's a really, not essential, but it's a really useful thing to have. Um, and if you've made some gravy, you can pour it in it and have it at the table to pour. I mean, it doesn't look very pretty, but does the job so yeah that's a really good thing to get i recommend one of those and then a couple of other things i think are useful we'll take i'll take you through some utensils next get a nice metal bowl like this normally you get these into three sizes as a group or something so i've got three sizes of these for mixing bowls or tossing salads in whatever um yeah that, that's great investment and then a sieve like this I actually use this as a colander as well. I just have this, so you can get a colander if you want to, but I just use this most of the time. So this kind of covers me off for everything. So, so a good fine mesh sieve. You can get different shapes of these, but this does the job. So yeah, that's a good investment as well. Definitely useful. So we're, we're rapidly running out of room in the kitchen with all this crap out, but never mind. What I will just take you through now is for your non-stick pans, I'd get yourself 
a little selection of these. One good spatula -y thing for flipping your eggs and doing whatever. So that's a nice heat proof plastic -y thing. That's, they're really good. This is a nice kind of neoprene-y, I think it's neoprene, I don't know what you call it, but again, heat resistant silicon, that's it. Silicon thing. So that's really good for scraping sauces out of your pans and even using it to flip things if you wanted to, but it's more about scraping sauces or stirring if you wanted to use it like that. And then the other thing, I mean, I'm a big fan of wooden spoons. So I always have a little wooden spoon like this shape. And then I have a, like a spatulary wooden wooden thing as well. And these are bamboo. Um, they're really useful. So that's my main go-to kind of utensils for non-stick stuff. And then if we go into the non-stick non world, hang on a second, we'll just grab these out. Oh, I've got a rogue wooden spoon in there. So these are, I think, really important things to have as well. Again, they're not gonna cost you much, like supermarkets sell them and, they, um, and they're not gonna cost you the earth. I got these from Victoria's Basement as pretty much a set, all by Benza these are, and they're great and they weren't very much. You know, you're talking like two or three bucks each sometimes, I mean, it's crazy, they're so, so cheap. Uh, so first of all, a good whisk, metal whisk like this, good handle, um, good kind of shape to it. And that's, yeah, that, that's awesome. So really important, good whisk. Oh. A little spoon thing like this. So this is good for getting out your spaghetti, your pastas. I also use this to fish out um, my eggs from my 63 degree egg thing. Um, I might show you that little gadget in a minute. A good slotted spoon like this for, you know, getting peas out of the water or poached eggs or something. That's really useful. Uh, a good, nice, you know, quite heavy duty spoon that's quite deep. So that's really good for spooning, you know, stuff out and then one more extreme of that is just a proper ladle for your soups and stocks and you know stuff like that and this has got kind of like slight poured edges for pouring so it just focuses the pouring which makes it a bit easier so that's really useful uh, and then the other thing is just two good pairs of these kind of tongs i've got a small pair um, with little neoprene you know silicon ends on it for your non-stick stuff and the smaller ones are a bit easier for you know getting in there and then this is a bigger one for more heavy duty stuff. They're quite sturdy. Always check that they don't bend like, you know, that, you know, down and up that way because you don't want that. Some of the shitter ones do do that. Just check the mechanism and that it's sturdy. And this thing's got a really nice kind of locking mechanism thing to it. So um, I really like these. And that this is, this is the, it's the same brand, but just a smaller one. So yeah, really, really great. Um, so I have two sizes of those always, a heavy duty and a slightly more small one for more fiddly stuff. Uh, the other good thing to have is a really good masher. I like these mashers because you can hold down and, and go straight through. Whereas the ones that are more like this that you kind of mash down like this, I don't think are as good. Whereas if you've got it holding like this, it's just much more ergonomically right. Um, so yeah, masher like that, that's perfect. So yeah, I'd recommend one of those. Um, that pretty much covers it. I'll just show you. Bloody hell, I've literally got utensils everywhere. Uh, I'll show you a couple of other little kitchen gadgets that I think are useful. Get yourself a good stick blender like this. This is just from Audi. It was like super cheap and it does the job to whiz up soups and bits and bobs like that. So you can spend more if you want to. I mean, the good brands that aren't going to cost you the earth, like Sunbeam, Breville, Kenwood, they're all really good. Um, and you know, you'll get a good deal on one of those for not very much money, like 20 or 30 bucks. Um, this was, yeah, like I said, this was an Audi one and it's actually pretty good. So, so yeah, I use that quite a lot. And the other thing I use um, is my Anova uh, kind of CV thing. So this is this contraption. I'll just show you on this pan and um, let's get this out of the way. So this thing has a uh, clamp that goes like this on the pan. You then fill the pan with water and you can do this in any size pan. That's about as small as you can go with it, but you can go much bigger with a pan if you've got more stuff to cook. And so you fill it with water, that just slides in. That just slides in there. There's a minimum and a maximum level on the water thing. So it, with a pan, a smaller pan, just make sure you're over that minimum mark. Um, and then this just turns on and 
attached to your app, set your temperature. And I mean, I only really use this for eggs. I don't really like using it for um, cooking the meats and fishes and stuff because you've got to use all this plastic, which I don't really like because you've got to throw it away. So you can get these with like these like silicon pouches that you can cook it in. So I'm going to look into that and see. But for the moment, for me, for eggs, it's just amazing because it just makes them perfect. So if you saw my chicken and sweet corn soup recipe or my brekkie wraps, I, this is the thing I used to make those. So um, we'll put the links up at the end of the video for that if you wanna check those videos out. Um, yeah, so that's a really great thing. That's, again, that's by Anova, so that's A-N-O-V-A. -A. Um, you can go online and order that. And they've got more and more of a range of stuff now as well, which is really good. So um, yeah, so that's that. And I think that pretty much covers it off. So we've gone through knives, utensils, good saucepans, what to look for. Just always a thick bottom base and you're gonna be set. Make sure it's nice and sturdy, the handles, just check that kind of stuff. Make sure, <clears throat> make sure it's not screwed in. It should really be riveted and then it's gonna be a lot more sturdy. Uh, and then Pyrex dishes for oven roasting stuff, for sure, that's my preference. Cast iron pans, like by Le Creuset or Chasseur, like a big casserole pan, I think that's really important. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it really, you know. Don't, I mean, this has taken me quite a long time to amass all this kind of stuff. So just take it step by step, get yourself a decent knife, you know, even if it's just one of these 210 mil chef's knives, just start off with something like this, you know, go and go from there really, just branch out, a couple of good utensils, get a couple of good saucepans. If you're gonna just start off, just get one pan like this big and one frying pan, a non-stick one maybe, and um, you know, go from there really, so yeah. I think that covers it off. I've waffled enough. God knows how long this is. Um, so yeah, I hope that was useful and some decent information. I think I gave you a few good brands that you could use. Um, so hopefully, yeah, hopefully that helps you out and um, gives you an idea of the kind of, you know, what to look for in terms of quality and um, a good few basics that you need. And then obviously if you want to go fancy and start getting yourself some nice Japanese knives, then head over to Chef's Armoury and check those out. Um, they've got some great knives there, so. Yeah, so there we go. Cheers for tuning in. I'm Timmy Foodie. Uh, subscribe, like, share, that would be awesome. Follow me on Instagram at Timmy underscore foodie, yeah. um, or head over to uh, timmyfoodie.com and there's loads of recipes on there already, so you can uh, check that out and um, yeah, follow those recipes along. Um, and yeah, we'll be back very soon. We're doing a lamb casserole tomorrow. So um, we'll get that recipe up in a couple of days. Um, and then I'm gonna stick up a few recipes, um, a few kind of uh, simpler, not simplified, but I've done some quite long videos where I've done like my lasagna recipe initially with the ragu. I started with a tomato sauce. So I'm just gonna pull that, rest, that tomato sauce recipe out and just give that to you separately. And then also my bechamel recipe that I did. I'll split that out into a slightly smaller, shorter video um, that's a bit more of an instructional thing because I think that might be quite useful for you. So, um, And then, yeah, we'll be back with another video soon. Cheers for tuning in, everyone, and we'll be back very soon.